Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Christian Sport Fight Fellowship. This is our January 2020 meeting. I just want to wish you all a happy new year, a uh, like the U.S. calendar new year and also a lunar new year. 2020 is going to be a good year with uh, good rides. If you guys want to help out in this ministry in any capacity, let me know. And if you have any ride suggestions, you can let me know too and we can put it on the calendar. 2019 was also a good year. I made this highlight video, which I'll play at the end of this, and you can just see all the places we've been to and all the people that have came, and it's just a really good time. So today we're, we're going to go over this topic of intimacy and then ride to Stenson Beach. And you may, might be like, what? It's, it's like the first of the year, or it's my first time here, and we're going to cover such a deep topic. And you might be like, do I have to share personal stuff? Uh, the answer is... Uh, don't be alarmed. There's many definitions to intimacy, and no, you do not have to share your personal stories unless you want to. So, <laughs> so I was thinking, what kind of material can we cover this year? And I found this. Next slide. It's a seven-part backstory Bible study uh, from Crew. I think they used to be called Campus Crusades, Crusaders for Christ, or they still might be. And it's like a seven-part study that covers topics like intimacy, betrayal, anticipation, pursuit, sacrifice, invitation, and reunion. And today, the word intimacy has taken on a sexual connotation, but it's more than that. There is the physical side, but there's also the social, emotional, mental, and spiritual aspects as well. And Google, I Google intimacy and... The definition is close familiarity or, or friendship or closeness. I did not make it up, so here's a screenshot, so you know that I got it from a reliable source. Uh, intimacy, <laughs> really remain, uh, intimacy really means total life sharing, and haven't we all had that desire to be, uh, desire for closeness, for oneness, for sharing our life with someone totally? I know I have, even at a young age, uh, like kids start to pair up like you might have nieces or nephews in preschool or kindergarten and you joke like oh they got a, a little boyfriend or a girlfriend or something and it's kind of funny and cute and uh, and I remember in kindergarten there's like three three dudes in me so there's four guys and then there's like four girls and then for some reason like we just like paired up with one of them and I don't know why but we just did <laughs> and I feel like it's in elementary school when you start having serious crushes on people because you're like past the cootie stage. And then if you have the courage to ask someone out, you do. And for me, I didn't have enough courage until like 15 years uh, later. And that's when I asked my first girlfriend out. And uh, that was in freshman year of high school. And then like you might start dating your high school sweetheart seriously or you might start dating someone seriously in college or after work, and then eventually you might get married. That seems to be a common trend for most people. And as some of you may know, I, I've been dating my current girlfriend for almost two, two years. And earlier this year, we pro or I, I proposed to her with the help of her friends, my friends, her family, and my family. We surprised her at Grizzly Peak. and. Last year, we, we rode to Grizzly Peak and a couple of times, and I was like, this is a really nice view. It's like, it's after the parking lot, you like walk over into this dirt area, and there's just this huge lookout of like the Bay, Bay Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge, Oakland, Berkeley, San Francisco, and it's just really beautiful. And unfortunately, when we got there that day, it was foggy and we couldn't see anything. But fortunately, she said yes. <laughs> So the question is, if this thing works. So where does that desire for intimacy come from? Inti um, this article said, intimacy and relationships have been woven into the fabric of life. We are fashioned as works of art reflecting the image of our creator. We think, we choose, we create. We are designed to love, to experience intimacy with God and each, each other. And I think this is, um, a good example of this is if we go through Genesis 2, 1, uh, 18 through 25. So 
in Genesis, or before this, God created the heavens and the earth, and he created the animals, pairs of animals, and he also created Adam. So I'm just going to read this and then say some commentary, which may or may not be entertaining. Um, yeah, 18. The Lord said, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him. So in chapter 1, God created everything and called it good. And by saying that being alone is not good entails that God designed us for companionship. He designed mankind to enjoy his creation with others. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. Uh, so the man gave names to all the livestock, to birds in the sky and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So God gave Adam dominion over all the animals, and he let them name them. And I just imagine him being like, seeing all these pairs of animals, like, and he would be like ants, dogs, cats, elephants, lions, tigers zebras and so on and so forth and then he realized like hey there's two of each but where's where's the other one of mine so what happened so the lord god caused the man to fall into a deep sleep and while he was sleeping he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh then the lord uh, back here. then the lord god made a woman from the ribs he had taken out of the man and brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. So I just imagine him waking up and being like, so, uh, listen, can I have your number? <laughs> this is a mad TV reference. Like he was so like all, all struck with this woman that he saw like this beautiful creature and he, he wanted her number. <laughs> If you haven't watched that, you should watch it. So um, that is why man leaves his father and mother and is united with his wife, and they became one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. So verse 25 ends by saying that Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. This is the perfect example of intimacy. They're at this point in their relationship where they're like perfectly connected with each other and with God and there is un they're, they're all loved unconditionally. And unfortunately, the world is not like that right now because of something that we'll cover next month. And I believe that through God's grace, we still see glimpses of perfect intimacy uh, with, through closeness with friendships between like family and friends, but also like when you have the spouse, you share the most intimate stuff with them. And I think that's just a foretaste of what heaven's going to be like when we have our relationship with God. So uh, next month, we'll discuss the reasons why that perfect union does not exist now. And this article said, there is an oughtness instilled in us longing for the ideal world and perfect intimacy for which we were created. We sense that the evils of war and rape and death are alien to our existence. As Martin Luther King observed, we are confronted by an eternal oughtness, that the world is not as it ought to be, that condition, unconditional love and perfect peace are forever elusive. So I invite you guys to join us next month as we continue discussion and dive deeper on the topic of betrayal and how that intimacy was lost. So some questions we can answer later are, are why is the thought of being alone so unappealing? Could you describe a time when you felt alone? As you feel comfortable, describe the best date you've ever been on, what feelings were present, what made it the best, and then throughout this week, uh, as you reflect on the subject of intimacy on, your, on a scale of 1 through 10, how would you rate your desire to be known and be known by God? Do you see yourself moving closer to or further away from God? So that concludes this part. I got a video for you guys, if you haven't seen it already. I live, hot on the wire, hidden in the fire, 
for so long But you show me better A new kind of love It's ever the one I want I left it